Let's get over to New 6's Justin Warmoth for The Weekly. This is The Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmoth. Good morning, I'm Justin Warmoth. Last week, we got our first real test on how the voting process will work during the pandemic. By all accounts, Florida's primary went smoothly. But there are still concerns heading into the general election. This morning, Seminole County Supervisor of Elections, Chris Anderson, is here with information voters need to know. Chris, good morning. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me, Justin. I appreciate it. No problem. So let's talk about how things went on Tuesday. How did everything go? Everything went well. Um, we got a record uh, turnout, a huge turnout. It was very, uh, very inspiring to see folks come out and, and cast their ballots, both by mail early and on Election Day. People were smiling, tagging us with their, uh, their vote seminal uh, I Voted sticker. So it was good. You know, it, you mentioned voter turnout. Are we talking record number of, of people going and voting for a, in a primary election, uh, or are we talking about mail-in voting? Well, uh, and to clarify, um, we, we did better than we did in August of 2016. Oh, wow. Um, right, you know, so, you know, we had uh, 61,000, uh, close to 62,000 folks cast a ballot in the three methods of voting in uh, in 2016 August primary, and we had 80,000, uh, 80,000 people voted in uh, the 2020 primary election. So that's a, a big increase. And um, if it's any uh, idea of what November is going to look like, then we uh, we are ready. We got to get prepared for sure. When you look at uh, the different ways to cast a ballot. Did you see a decline in in-person voting? Well, you know, so it, it's very interesting. Like, you know, with the increase, it's kind of uh, hard to see a decrease because mm -hmm. what we saw is we saw a decrease in mail returning, but we saw an increase in folks returning their vote by mail ballots to the drop box. I mean, even yesterday, you know, having people come into the office in our lobby and returning vote by mail. I mean, the door couldn't stay closed. People were coming in and out, in and out. So, you know, we saw a decrease in the amount of mail being returned in the form of ballots, but, you know, we saw the increase in uh, the ballots coming in through the drop boxes. Interesting. Let's talk about some of the challenges and, and maybe surprises. Um, sure. It didn't have to, maybe there weren't any big challenges, but certainly I'm sure there were some surprises to you. What stands out uh, on Tuesday? Well, you know, so it, this was a test of COVID-19 procedures, right? So I think that was the, the, the thing that uh, stands out the most. It's like, okay, how is everybody going to respond? So the number one thing are masks, right? You know, how many people are going to wear masks and how many people are not? How many are going to be uh, how people are going to respond to our uh, uh, our things that we're doing with COVID. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to hold this up. This is what a voter said. Number one in safety. So that was a great indication of uh, it worked. Yeah. You know, we put a lot of time and effort, as you know, into trying to figure out what's the best way to keep to make in-person voting safe yeah and you know most of the times everyone's like hey <clears throat> we got in and out it was quick it was fast easy now it's i felt safe it was clean i appreciate the fact that the voting booth was clean prior to me going in thank you for every that the the that there was a shield between myself and the election worker that they were wearing gloves and masks so that's what we were really looking at and also too you know, we were the first county to send out the vote by mail request form. So we did that to make sure that we could put a dent in in-person voting. So we wouldn't have, you know, wait times at any of our precincts. And that was a success. So we didn't know how the voters would respond, but now I'm going to sit down and I'm going to go through thousands of comment cards and uh, get their feedback. You know, as we look forward to um, November, uh, the turnout will be significantly more uh, right. than, than what we had on Tuesday. Do, do you see going forward uh, what that will look like? I mean, what are you doing to prepare for that, for that number of people, whether they're coming to the polls, whether they're sending their ballots in, 
uh, sending you guys sending the ballots out. I mean, that has to be a, a huge logistical uh, feat here. Well, we started preparation for uh, the general election because obviously we knew it was coming um, before the primary. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy to announce that we will have an eighth early voting location in Seminole County for the general election. Um, it's going to be a 10,000 square foot uh, uh, location. Mm-hmm. I'm very grateful for the owners that, are, that own the property uh, that are actually residents of Texas uh, that are willing to do their civic duty. And it's in an area in Altamont, in East Altamont, where we needed uh, a, uh, a early voting location. And it just so happens that it's got, t- it's 10,000 square feet. When we originally uh, procured the, the site, it wasn't in reference to COVID. It was just, we needed an early voting location. Mm-hmm. It just happened to be 10,000 square feet. Right. So now that we, we need the, uh, the space, it just kind of all the stars just kind of align on this and it all just kind of works out. So that's the number one thing um, is that we're going to give with this increased turnout, we're going to have a, another early voting site where folks can safely go and vote in person. Uh, when it comes to vote by mail, um, we, we prepare by uh, making sure that there was enough supplies with our vendor because people don't realize when they, when you request that ballot, we have to make sure that there are envelopes, a secrecy sleeve, and also the ballot inside of it. So those materials have to be accounted for ahead of time uh, so we can provide that, uh, that service. So we made sure with our vendors that we're good. We've increased our numbers. We expect, uh, I mean, we're at now we're, we're on, uh, close to 100,000 mail ballot requests. That's a high turnout uh, in vote by mail. And I believe that the vote by mail would be a higher uh, return. Mm-hmm. I want you to clear something up for us. Um, sure. We've heard uh, some people say that absentee voting is different than mail-in voting, and absentee voting is better than mail-in voting. Can you set the record straight for us? Sure. So absentee voting requires a, a, that a voter qualify for an approved reason to be away from the polling location. And in the state of Florida, we don't require the uh, qualification um, because the most important thing is that a voter is a registered voter and they live at a verified address within the county in which they are requesting a ballot be mailed to them. So, you know, if you want to be on vacation uh, and uh, or you have to be out of town, you can request a ballot be mailed to a address other than the address on file in the state of Florida. Without reason, we don't need to know, but we can send you that uh, ballot as long as you provide us with written authorization if you want it sent to some place other than what's on file. So the difference is is that that Florida focuses on making sure that you are a verified person and you live at a verified address, and the reasons are uh, not, uh, not a qualifier. That's the difference between absentee and vote by mail. Now, even before the pandemic, election security has been a focal point for supervisors around the country. Coming up, Anderson will discuss the safeguards Seminole County has in place to prevent any outside interference. We'll be right back. This is the Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Welcome back. As we get closer to the November election, there seems to be a growing skepticism about whether it's safe to vote by mail. But if last week's primary was any indication, election supervisors have a plan in place to make sure every vote is counted. Seminole County Supervisor of Elections Chris Anderson is back now to explain. It seems like the narrative keeps growing in the sense that the next morning, so if the election's on November 3rd, November 4th, we won't have the, the, the right count yet. Right. It'll be delayed. Do you see that going forward? Not from the, I don't see that as an as a issue for the SOEs. I mean, okay. what we do, um, you know, by two days after the election, we are required to uh, continue to look at provisional ballots. We have to count those two days after the election. And we also have to look at any cure affidavits. Those are forms that voters have to send us back that we sent them in the event that there may be a signature mismatch or no signature on their vote by mail ballot. So the voters have extra time now 
thanks to the law change in July of 2019, to fix any of their issues. So what we will do is uh, tomorrow, we will sit down and take a look at all of those things. And then those numbers will be added to the overall uh, total. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we're completely familiar with and that we do quite a bit. Um, and, and then we have to also do an audit of the election and we want to make sure that you, we got it right. So right now, and as of last night after 7 p.m., the results that we saw are still considered unofficial. Hmm. Got it. You know, as we, between Russia interference and now the post office and now mail-in voting, everything like that, it seems like the skepticism of America is there for whether or not their vote will actually count. How safe is it? What would you tell viewers who are a little bit skeptical that their vote will count in November? I'm not just the SOE, I'm also a client of voting here in Seminole County. Um, I voted by mail. I put my, my, drop, my mail ballot into my personal mailbox and my ballot didn't get any special attention. Um, I've tested my, the system that I'm responsible for as far as vote by mail is concerned uh, twice now, and I'm completely confident in it. Um, and that's the biggest thing that I tell voters that have that skepticism is that I've tested the system. Um, also, um, you know, we, we're constantly trying to improve our processes and things that we do. Now, as far as in-person voting is concerned, it's safe. It is safe. Mm -hmm. um, but the best thing I can say is just call your SOE. You're going to see a lot of information between now and November that may or may not be uh, completely accurate. But I get voters that reach out to me and they have concerns. And I spend two, three hours on the phone with them and they just ask me a ton of questions. And I think it's excellent because they're like, wow, you know, I really, number one, didn't think I get a chance to talk to you. And number two, I didn't think that you, that um, I can't believe that the answers you gave me are contrary to what I was thinking. And thank you for providing that information. That's the key to it. Every one of my colleagues will do that any given day of the week because we want to set the record straight. So if voters have a question about how elections administration takes place in their county, reach out to, the, to their local SOE because they're the ones responsible for it. What seems to be the most popular question that someone has? Uh, well, we'll go by the, the methods of voting. So for vote by mail, it's, you don't count those until the race is close, right? That seems to be a, a I love being a myth buster, you know, <laughs> knock that one right out of the gate. Uh, no, we always tell voters, actually vote by mail is the very first votes that are counted in an election. And they're like, oh, okay. I, they just assumed that it was close. Yeah. Um, when it comes to early voting in election day, um, we're transmitting early voting is not transmitted over uh, any internet source that's actually uh, tallied and put together back at the SOE location after early voting is complete because remember once early voting ends the election has not ended so therefore you can't uh, tabulate results or view them so um, we have to bring those machines back here. Uh, so uh, now moving on to election day, we're only transmitting a very a, a smaller portion of the election results uh, on the night of the election. And most people think that you know the the, the vast majority of the votes are going traveling through uh, transmission, and therefore could are uh, susceptible to some type of nefarious behavior. And that's actually not true. It's a smaller amount, um, but still in all, um, we all do the best job we can to make sure that those votes are as safe as possible when they make their way back to us. I know that different um, SOEs do things differently, um, mm -hmm. but when it comes to Seminole County, the infrastructure in place when it comes to like software and preventing any sort of interference, can you uh, tell our viewers about that? Sure. So, you know, there are uh, decentralized networks within the SOE office. So uh, Florida is a decentralized network, which means that we're not, the SOEs are not connected. Uh, so now you zero that down to the office. We have uh, uh, 
through the Department of Homeland Security, we have our website being monitored. Um, I get a report. Um, we were the first uh, county in the state of Florida to take part in that. We actually were the pilot program for them. That was a great program that we, we continue to do. And we wanna make sure that we're not susceptible to what they call DDoS attacks, which could bring your website down. We've added in a protective layer to make sure that that doesn't happen. Let's trans transition over to the actual internal network. So the biggest thing that you wanna do is make sure that you're doing your proper updates, your maintenance, and you're doing patches. So we're constantly doing that. And we put ex extra firewalls in place that uh, keep our network internal. Uh, and the biggest thing that we do is this one server that's connected to the outside world, we don't keep it plugged into the wall. So you would have to know when we're plugging that in and when we're transmitting to the state uh, within milliseconds. And that's just, uh, it's virtually impossible to do. Now, when you look at uh, the transmission of results from our DS200s uh, in, out in the field to on election night, we uh, have a private tunnel that our results travel through. So it's not on the internet. And our IP addresses are not even for, uh, forward facing. So we can closed all those off. We are trend, we, at the time we had the tunnel installed, we were one of eight counties. So we've gone through uh, a ton of different measures to make sure that the votes in Seminole County are safe. Um, that I'm, and, and that's my number one thing, protecting their vote, making sure that they know that, you know, I kept you safe. Uh, on the streets as a law enforcement officer, I'm gonna keep your votes safe as your supervisor. Last thing, uh, let's between now and November, what what's on your your list of what needs to happen between now and then? So we're always gonna do an after action report. It's a very important piece. Um, the military actually used that to to not talk about what we did right, but let's talk about how we can get better. So we're gonna immediately do that. Then the second thing is is you know as I talked about that early voting site. We're going to start promoting it, start pushing it out and getting people, make them aware that, hey, you got a new site that you can go to and it can take a high volume of traffic. Uh, the third thing is making sure that we have enough supplies, because I think uh, the uh, COVID supplies, uh, that's going to be a standard issue moving forward. Um, we're going to certainly budget for it in the years to come. So we want to make sure that we have to restock. We got to restock, reboot, and uh, it'll look like a bomb went off in the, in the warehouse for a couple of days, but um, we'll get everything reorganized and get ready to deploy here uh, on, uh, for early voting, which starts October 19th. And my thanks to Chris Anderson for the time this week. For the latest information on the general election, including how you can request an absentee ballot in your county, just head to clickorlando.com slash results 2020. I'm Justin Mormoth. Have a great Sunday.